I warned you all I was going to do this as a follow up to an overview of BYD's new thousand volt super E platform. I took it all the way up to 11. Here are some super deep observations from their press event video. And I also skimmed through the comments from you, the viewers, some of you who understand the language better than my translate app. And here we go. BYD mentioned their vehicles will have pulse heating, allowing for flash charging even at cold temperatures. In a typical BEV, battery preconditioning uses the vehicle's heating system to externally warm the battery to a temperature suitable for fast charging. Pulse heating internally heats the battery. The charger would send a pulse width modulated current into the battery, self-heating it from the inside. The batteries are charged with direct current, but to warm them, they are pulse width modulated. This sounds dangerous, yes, but done in a controlled way, research has shown promise not degrading battery performance over hundreds of pulse test heating. Google it. You'll find several research papers online from universities in China funded by government grants. I'm just saying, not all government grants are wasteful spending that need to be cut. And all of this validates earlier social media posts talking about BYD vehicles being able to charge at 120 kilowatts all the way down to minus 30 degrees Celsius. Now, that's not megawatt charging, but it's good enough for when it gets extremely cold. It's pretty cool, huh? Or should I say warm? BYD showed this video played back at 10x speed, but they have a clock to show the original time. Months ago, I plotted data from a social media video of a Lee Mega, so I did the same thing for BYD's Super Mega platform. Side note to anyone in the auto industry, all electric vehicles should offer details like this in their displays. Kilowatts, volts, amps, battery temp, in addition to percent and range being added. Showing the data to the hundredth of a percent may be a bit overkill, but EV owners who want to nerd out, give them the tools to do it. Maybe plot a graph on each charge event. Anyway, you can see the much higher BYD peak charging, but it's only for a short period of time. Credit Lee Auto for going over 500 kilowatts and staying at over 400 kilowatts for most of their test. And this test was not done by the manufacturer, so it wasn't doctored condition. Lee Mega uses NMC chemistry batteries from CATL. BYD uses their own new and improved LFP blade batteries. Meanwhile, in my car, here's a typical charging session. Yeah, going over 20. Oh, uh, wait, that's it, huh? Thermal management is critical in any EV battery, but pushing that much energy into them in a short period of time just raises the stakes. EVs with prismatic batteries have them sitting on a cooling plate, but BYD's Super E platform adds a second cooling plate on top. In addition, they are using direct refrigerant cooling, so they might use like R1234 refrigerant running through those cooling plates, not a liquid coolant. If you'd like to learn more about this concept, I'll put a link to yet another white paper funded by Chinese government grants. The system they tested is a dual plate direct refrigerant cooling. Sounds just like the BYD system. Last year, I talked to Prestone about the coolants they are specifically making for EVs. They demonstrated the different types of liquids on a Chevy Volt P have powertrains. The liquids used to pull the heat from the batteries are non-conductive fluids, but liquids are heavy. Refrigerants are light, also non-conductive, and BYD says safer, and they are more effective at pulling out heat from the batteries. Combined, they claim a 90% increased heat exchange performance. I'm assuming the refrigerant is part of a, a heat pump system, so it could be used to warm the batteries, precondition them on cold days on the way to the charging location. And once there, they can use that pulse heat system that I talked about earlier to further warm them up if needed. The batteries themselves are new. The thermal management techniques are in addition to those new batteries. I'm just going to translate off the slides of the presentation. Details behind each innovation are probably in some research white paper online somewhere. In general, to achieve faster 10C charging, they need to make it easier for the lithium ions to flow between the cathode and anode. They said it has ion channel technology that reduces internal resistance by up to 
dual electron flow reduces heat generation by 50%. SEI, which is solid electrolyte interface, increases high temp battery life by 35%. The fast charging batteries contain all their latest innovations, but don't expect this to become their mainstream battery. This is their answer to other Chinese automakers who are charging at over 500 kilowatts. There will still be plenty of BYD vehicles in the future that charge just fine at slower speeds with a more affordable electrical architecture. There were several comments about the dual cable charging, some saying that my observations were wrong. I think we need more explanation from BYD on these details. The comments suggested that with the right BYD flash charging equipment, you can get a thousand volts at a thousand amps through just one connector. The reason for having two connectors on the vehicle is to use lesser hardware. For example, if you come across a row of 250 kilowatt chargers, you can plug in two of them to get 500 kilowatts. But the videos I keep seeing, they show visuals of two flows of energy. That's why I think even with the BYD flash chargers, they'll require that, each side being a thousand volts, but the amps are split across the two. You sure about that? I could be wrong on this, I fully admit that. I know that GBT is not officially rated to carry a thousand amps. That's why in China they're working on the Chaoji standard, with his, which is a higher voltage and higher amperage connector for the future vehicles. Perhaps BYD just pushes higher amps until the temperature reaches a threshold. Plenty of other Chinese automakers are pushing more than 250 amps through one single GBT connector. In North America, J3400 was redesigned to accommodate higher amps, but to do really extreme charging, the megawatt charging system was designed mainly with electric trucks and ships in mind. At first glance, the flash charger shown looked like there are two powered cabinets, one for each of the cable connectors on the dispenser. But the cabinets are not the same, and watching it again tells a story of how they plan to incorporate battery energy storage into the sites, particularly in areas where the electric grid may not be able to support such high-powered charging. They aim to make these available anywhere there's electricity. One cabinet is for the power electronics, the other houses the battery storage, BYD batteries of course. The diagram shows that the power station may have to supply more electricity to homes and businesses during peak demand. That's when the system would dynamically draw power from the battery storage on site. Then in the evening when demand is less, they can recharge the stationary battery. This is not a new concept. Most charging providers are working on the same or similar designs. Each charger has two cables with connectors capable of simultaneously charging, and it's rated at well over 1,000 kilowatts, 1,360 to be exact, lending more credibility to the comments that one cable is capable of much more than I imagined. They also know that owners will sometimes have to use lesser charging hardware, so they point out that the vehicles on the Super E platform are compatible with older 500 volt and 750 volt chargers. To do this, they have to step up the voltage to roughly a thousand volts needed. Other 800 volt vehicles do this as well, like the Hyundai eGMP platform, which uses the motor inverter to boost voltage. So apparently BYD will also. BYD is shifting this platform towards cell to body, where the pack is integrated into the body structure for increased packaging efficiency, reduced weight, and lower cost. Ah, <sighs> glad I got some of those details off my chest. My translations may be off a little, and some details we're still left to speculate until reviews start to roll in and questions get answered by their lead engineers. But I hope you can see that this is way more than just a thousand volt EV. Even when American companies get their hands on one of these BYDs, they're gonna be hard pressed to identify and understand all the microscopic details that make this EV sparkle. Oh, and BYD officially unveiled the Quinn L EV, which is less exciting, but still on the wonderful ePlatform 3.0 Evo. This company just doesn't know when to stop.